Hey guys, welcome to Top Dog Tips. If you're new to our website or our YouTube channel or one of our social media sites, I encourage you to look around. We have tons of information for dog owners. Everything from grooming tips and tricks to training tips and tricks, recipes, how-to videos, um, product reviews and comparisons, tons of great stuff that every dog owner needs to know about. So uh, today I want to talk to you, this is my boxer Chloe, and we're going to discuss how to groom your dog. Now this is just a very basic overview of what it takes to groom a dog. Every dog's needs are different. It depends on their breed, their coat type, their age, um, the area and the environment that you're in, all kinds of different things. So it's a very, very brief overview. I have specific videos done for each of these um, topics that I'm going to talk about today. If you want some more details about something uh, you may be really um, already, you know, know about bathing and brushing, but you want some more information on cleaning tear stains or um, cleaning your dog's ears, clipping his nails, things like that. So uh, check out all the how-to videos that I've done on the specifics, but this is a basic overview, especially great for new dog owners. If you're wondering, what am I getting into? What am I gonna need to do to groom my dog? All these different things. Um, here it is. So how to groom a dog. You wanna start with bathing. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna show you, get in depth in detail of every single thing that you're going to do, um, but bathing, the necessities that you're gonna need are a shampoo and a conditioner for your dog. Now, they do make certain shampoos and conditioners that are good for most coats, um, but if your dog is um, has a certain type of coat, maybe a wiry coat, a fine coat that gets tangled and matted, um, if your dog is uh, more prone to being a little bit stinky, you want to look for a shampoo that's going to meet those specific needs. Um, oily coats are things to look for, or dry skin. Uh, they make shampoos for all of that. So uh, we have, again, on the website and um, on our social media sites and on our YouTube channel, there's great information about all of that, choosing different uh, grooming products for your dog's needs, but the basics are a shampoo and a conditioner that meet the requirements that your dog uh, needs, that his skin and coat need. The other thing you may want is a um, odor neutralizing spray, a canine um, perfume, some people call it, or cologne, uh, whatever you think. So. You might want to get one of those in between baths, especially if you have a dog who's prone to get a little bit stinkier. Um, uh, we have a chocolate lab that loves to get in the water, so quite often she gets the kind of that uh, wet dog smell sort of lingering around, and after she dries off from being um, in a pond or a pool or something like that, um, I just spritz her down with this and um, go from there. So a deodorizing spray, you might want one of those. After you bathe your dog, you're gonna to wanna to dry him. A lot of people use a traditional um, bath towel that you use for yourself, which certainly works, but they do make uh, special dog towels that are uh, extra absorbent because dogs with especially thick coats hold a lot more water than a human body does. So your bath towels are gonna get full really quickly and drip. Um, they make some microfiber towels that really hold in a ton of water and are great for drying dogs. So check out one of those. Uh, you can also look into a hair dryer if you want. Um, they do make special hair dryers for dogs. I would recommend that. Same thing with shampoo. You don't want to use things made for humans. Um, one of the biggest differences between humans and dogs is uh, the t their skin. The pH of their skin is different. So they need a different shampoo, a different conditioner. Um, they also sense heat a lot more. They're more sensitive to it than we are. So you want a hair dryer that's made specifically for dogs. It's going to blow out um, some air that's not quite as hot. So um, bathe, then dry. Once your dog's dry, you can brush them. All kinds of different brushes. Um, I actually, I thought I was gonna do this with our chocolate lab, who was a little bit too hyper, so she went outside, and uh, our boxer is filling in, but um, this is a de-shedding brush, which, like I said, I was gonna use for our lab, because she has a nice, thick double coat. For a dog like Chloe, uh, with a short coat, you don't wanna use that. You might want a rubber brush, or um, just a nice bristle brush for a coat like this. Um, Again, you know, coat types require different brushes. There are tons of different brushes, de-shedding tools like this. There are dematting, detangling brushes. There are combs for really fine hair um, and for things like removing fleas, stuff like that. There are um, rubber bristle brushes. There are pin and bristle brushes, tons of different brushes. So do a little bit of research, find the best brush for your dog. Uh, give them a nice brush down that's gonna remove a lot of that uh, shed hair that was loosened up during the bath. So after uh, you've bathed, you've brushed, it's time to move on to uh, some of the finer details of grooming, which these are what a lot of people really don't 
think about when they are grooming their dog. Some of those finer details that you want to think about are your dog's nails, their face, um, of course their coat, which we is kind of the, the main thing that we think about when we're grooming a dog. So let's start with talking about hair cutting. Uh, if your dog needs regular haircuts, it may be something that you want to hire a professional groomer to do. Uh, it's something that can get a little bit tricky, and especially if you want your dog looking its best, uh, you want to make sure that you hire a professional. In the beginning, uh, you may want to hire a professional groomer and kind of watch what they do and maybe, um, you know, have them help you walk you through the process of the type of clip that your dog needs. There are videos and things like that for specific breeds online. If you have, say, a Shih Tzu or um, a certain breed, a Yorkie, and you want to give them a haircut, uh, there are some online if you're a little bit braver. You may need scissors. You may need trimmers like these ones. Uh, whatever you, you choose, uh, you know, like I said, do a little bit of research, find that right cut ask a professional if uh, you don't there are certain dogs that you never ever want to give a haircut to double coated breeds especially our chocolate lab is one uh, they have a nice fine undercoat and then a thicker coarser top coat and if you shave them even in the summertime you might think they get too hot that double coat insulates so it keeps them warmer in the winter it also helps to cool them in the summertime they do not need to be have a haircut or be shaved, you can ruin that undercoat and uh, it, it will never grow back the same way. So be sure that you ask a professional, talk to your vet, um, you know, do research on your own, whatever you need to do about your dog's specific hair type and how you need to cut that. Um, speaking of hair trimming, you want to trim the hair around your dog's paws as well. If I can get Chloe to tip over for me, hey, big girl. No, I know I need you to. Thank you. In between the pads of your dog's feet, hair grows. Some dogs, like Chloe, have nice short hair that doesn't really ever bother. Some dogs are chocolate lab, actually. We have a little beagle mix. She's a beagle cocker spaniel. She gets some longer hair in between her pads, too, that I trim. Uh, it can get matted and tangled, cause a lot of problems. Things like uh, sap can get stuck in it to cause issues as well. Um, and if you live in a colder climate, like we do here in Maine, ice can build up in there, too. So you want to keep the uh, hair of the paws trimmed. While we're talking about the paws, let's talk about nail clipping. There are a few different style nail clippers. Um, these are the scissor style, pretty traditional. These are the ones that are used most commonly. Um, there are also guillotine style clippers that kind of, if you think about a guillotine, um, you stick the claw in and they just come down and chop the tip of it off. And there are also Dremel tools that kind of file the nail uh, if you're not comfortable clipping nails. Clipping nails is very dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, you can clip it too short and the nail will bleed. You'll clip, click, uh, you will clip the quick. There we go, it's kind of a tongue twister. Um, so again, I've made a video on that. There are tons of other videos and information online, so make sure that you watch those and you know what you're doing before you start. Um, if you do happen to clip the quick of one of your dog's nails, it's not a huge deal. You can get it to stop bleeding. There are um, styptic powder and different uh, products for that, um, but you don't want to clip the quick on every nail or uh, your dog's going to have, um, they're going to be bleeding a lot, they're going to be in a lot of pain and they're never going to want you to clip their nails again. So uh, get more information on nail clipping before you do that. Uh, we can move on to some other basic grooming things. Um, we talked about hair cutting and trimming those um, the hair on the dog's uh, paws. You may also need to trim the hair on your dog's face. Schnauzers are a common breed that have the eyebrows and um, the beards. Uh, if the eyebrows are hanging in front of your dog's eyes, they can cause uh, infections, tear stains, things like that. Um, the beard can get really messy with food and water, so you want to keep that stuff trimmed up as well. Those are hair that you aren't going to uh, clip, you know, normally with a, a big haircut, um, but it's stuff that you, you might do with a major haircut, but you also are going to need to groom in between, so keep that in mind. Um, toothbrushing, you're going to want a special dog toothbrush and special dog toothpaste. You do not want to use, again, um, toothbrushes or toothpaste made for people. Uh, human toothpaste has a chemical in it called xylitol, and that's toxic to dogs. So um, if your dog's really good like Chloe, they'll let you lift your gums up, and you'll just kind of brush those teeth in there. Um, again, that's something that you don't want to go into lightly, but it is something that um, can be very beneficial. Dental hygiene, poor dental hygiene can actually harm your dog's overall health and well-being. So it's something that you want to do and you want to do it regularly, daily if you can, at least a few times a week if you can't. Um, ear cleaning. There's lots of ways to clean your dog's ears. There's some cleaners like this that you can just spray on a cotton ball and wipe around the inside of your dog's ears. There are pads like these ones. Oops. 
they're just little pads and you go around the inside of your dog's ear, clean his ears out. That should be done quite frequently with certain breeds. Certain breeds are more prone to wax buildup and um, have stinkier ears. Breeds like Chloe that don't really have a big problem with that. Um, it doesn't need to be done nearly as often. Uh, when we're talking about cleaning ears, that also reminds me of cleaning tear stains. Tear stain cleaner comes in the same way. I'm going to show you the ear cleaner, um, but it's actually... Um, you can use tear stain cleaner that comes in the same type of bottle. You put it in a cotton ball and just kind of wipe those tear stains. Tear stains can actually, a lot of people don't realize this, can get in between uh, your dog's paws and also around his muzzle. So wherever they are, you want to just wipe those and clean those. Um, there are different additives and things you can put in your dog's water to help prevent tear stains. Uh, and of course, you know, once they're there, you're going to have to clean fairly regularly, uh, sometimes a couple of times a day if the tear stains are really bad before they'll go away. Um, and then that's something that you can keep up preventatively to keep them uh, gone. So I think we've kind of covered everything. Again, I know that's really broad, uh, but just to run down it one more time, you're going to bathe, brush, you need to clip your dog's nails and trim the hair around his paws. He's gonna need ear cleaning, teeth cleaning, um, tear stain cleaning maybe, facial hair depending on his breed, um, and of course haircuts again depending on his breed as well. So there's a lot of work that goes into dog grooming. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll answer them if I can. Ask a professional, talk to your vet, look for a reputable groomer, groomer in your area. They will be happy to work with you and explain uh, what your dog needs depending on their breed and their age, um, the environment you live in. Like I said, um, you know, in Maine here it's cold so there's certain things that you need to know about in the winter time versus the summer time. Um, so lots, lots, lots of work goes into dog grooming. It's not as simple as bathing and brushing. If you don't have a dog yet, it's something you definitely want to think about the time involved that it's going to take for that. Um, and if it is something that you've already adopted a dog and you're kind of wondering what you've gotten yourself into, it's going to take some time. Um, my best advice to you is start early, keep up with it, do it regularly. Your dog's going to be more comfortable. Uh, things like tear stains, ear wax, hair in the uh, paws, the nails, they're not going to get overgrown and be out of control and take a lot of time to get back under control. They're going to be um, taken care of and then you can keep up on it preventatively without uh, having to spend as much time. So thanks for watching guys. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to me. My email is samantha at topdogtips.com. Check out our YouTube channel, our website, um, and our social media pages and you can find all kinds of great information for uh, other dog um, areas I guess for um, food training uh, products all kinds of great stuff so jump on there check it out and again if you see something or if you're looking for something and you don't see it reach out to me I'll be happy to get it on there for you guys thanks for watching and I'll see you next time